Alright guys, we're inside the truck. And if you remember from last time, we had a code P0154 low oxygen sensor activity bank to sensor 1. So in this segment, I wanted to take a look at the upstream oxygen sensors from a cold start and see if that bank 2 is slow to warm up, slow to respond, if it has a low amplitude before, uh, before changing it. So on the scanner here, I have plotted, uh, this is bank 2 sensor 1 uh, signal voltage, and this is bank 1 sensor 1. And then up here, we actually have the heater uh, amperage for the upstream sensors. So we'll see if, uh, you know, if the heater is working. But uh, let's start the truck up and see how fast these two uh, start to react. And then we also have, we could look at the open loop, closed loop PID, but uh, it'll be obvious when, when they uh, come to life here. So here we go. Glare in the background. Let's try that. So interestingly, we have zero amps on the upstream heaters, don't we? Uh, let's go back to list view. You can see the the downstreams have amperage on them, but not the. not the upstreams so let's just look at open loop closed loop and then these two guys here so I'm not on the gas or anything this is just at idle How do I get out of here? There we go. So you can see bank one, sensor one is climbing. Well, they both are. So it's too early to tell. But I'm surprised that the uh, that there's no amperage on these heaters. <clears throat> It's still an open loop. We've been running for what, a couple minutes. Ah, uh, I don't want to waste too much time. Let's give it a little gas. So look at that. Bank one sensor one. Did a couple cycles. We're still in open loop, it looks like. Uh, but that is, you know, for the entire engine, there's no like system one, system two. Let me raise the RPMs a little bit here. Alright, check this out. So now we're in closed loop for sure. Back to idle. See our sensor 1 amplitude looks decent. I mean, I wouldn't say that's great. You know, it's supposed to be from 0.2 to 0.8. Eh. Sometimes it's not dropping below 0.4 volts. But our bank 2 upstream is basically just sitting around half a volt, not doing too much. We can look at our short term trims, bank 1, bank 2, they're normal, long terms are normal. 
So this is where our you know low activity coat is coming from. Now as it warms up, we can see the sensor tries to wake up. I'm not sure if the computer is using this one for both banks right now or if it's still looking at the bank too. You see, it's, it's waking up slowly. So I would say, you know, they're both old, but bank two is definitely less slower to respond, slower to heat up. So that's all I wanted to do here before replacing it, and then we'll get a shot after replacing just the bank two. So let's save that data, that was a good capture. And just for kicks, let's see if we set any trouble codes in that warm up. I doubt it. Yeah, no codes. Okay. Um, all right, I'll get you a shot after I get the new sensor in. Well, the oxygen sensor gods were kind to me today, fortunately. The old sensor came out about a couple minutes, just with a regular oxygen sensor socket. So no torching, drilling, hammering <laughs> uh, required. I'll leave that to Eric, you know. Uh, he's, he's really good at that. But you can see our new sensor is direct fit. Uh, Denso is the o OEM manufacturer. There's the part number. So those are the upstream, that's the upstream part number. Uh, yeah, we're going to put this in and uh, look at the scanner again, look at our data, see how fast this one responds. Alright, with the new oxygen sensor in, that's bank 2 upstream. Let's start it up. Check this out. Bank 2 sensor 1. Heater amps. 1.2 amps. Ha! Huh, so the other one's bad too. Check it out. That's why there's no amperage. The, the heater's broken, but we're not getting a code for it. So, let's, uh, let's graph these guys. So check it out. Bank 2 sensor 1. Instant. Instant response. And this guy's taking forever. So I guess I should have replaced both of them, but so still open loop. Give it a little gas. See, bank two sensor one is, is being heated while bank one is actually also uh, faulty. So it warms up on its own, but the heater is inactive. That's why it's staying in open loop for so long. So let's see what happens when it actually reaches closed loop. Oh, there you go, see? So our replacement sensor is doing beautifully. And sensor one is looking kind of crappy compared to that. Let's see it idle. Very nice. Look at that nice uh, amplitude there from point two to point eight. And this one, yeah. I'm just curious how good the cats look. I think one sensor two, think two sensor two. I'll raise our pins a little bit.
Yeah, not great. So in this case, you have to make sure to tell the customer that this check engine light has been on for a lot of reasons, and we're fixing most of them. But now that we have a working oxygen sensor, then you know, might get a 420 catalyst efficiency code. Who knows, right? So you got to be up front. And this is why we do extra testing to avoid unhappy customers, right? Let's look at our fuel trims. So bank to, yeah, I mean, fuel trims are fine. So, the heater on bank one sensor one is just not not operational. So I don't know what the logic is behind setting the heater code. You would think it would just measure continuity, right? But maybe it just looks at the warm-up time and compares the two sensors, and whichever one's slower, I don't really know. I mean, we would we could look we could look at the codes, and but in any case. It needs another oxygen sensor. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that explains the low activity code. I mean, lo look at those signals. I mean, that's that's sweet. That's kind of crappy. Not dropping below 0.4. All right, just a quick one. Thanks for watching, guys. Here's here's another little interesting piece of information about this truck in particular. I'm looking at OBD2. Uh, readiness monitors and what do you see here look at all these not supported uh, PIDs the catalyst evap uh, 8 CO2 sensor heater it doesn't even check for that so I don't think it can even throw a heater code uh, so it does monitor for misfires and then nothing else the EGR O2 sensors and I think that's because this is a heavy duty vehicle, meaning it weighs over uh, the gross vehicle weight rating is 8,600 pounds. And on the emission sticker, it actually doesn't say OBD2 compliant, it just says, you know, meets heavy duty regulations. So that would explain why we don't even have an oxygen sensor heater trouble code, because, well, frankly, the government doesn't care, so the manufacturer is like, well, we're not going to provide it. So, yeah, that's that. And, uh, you know, we'll just log that information in the back of our mind. Um, the next one will be quicker and more efficient. Alright guys, thanks a lot for watching.